Ponies. Welcome to the Sailor Moon Fan Club Podcast. I'm your host, Victoria L. Johnson, and I'm here with Stephanie Ijima, the creator and founder of Naysaga, the UK's leading diverse and inclusive platform for gaming and entertainment. She's also a games consultant, content creator, events producer. She does DNI, like she does everything. DNI training, I'm sorry. She does everything, pretty much anything you need. <laughs> Super excited. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, thank you so much for having me. And what's up, Moonies? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love that. So, for all the Moonies out there, can you tell us what's your first memory of watching Sailor Moon? Uh, my first memory of Sailor Moon. I remember watching it firstly on Fox Kids. So in the UK, we had um, Fox Kids as one of the main broadcasters for a lot of popular anime. So like your Pokemon and Sailor Moon and all that good stuff. And then you had Toonami as well, where it had like Ultimate Muscle, you know, all like Gundam Wing, all that good stuff. But it was really Sailor Moon that was one of, if not my first introductions into anime. And... Uh, over here in the UK and obviously the Western region, we all watched it in dubbed and it only ended in at a certain point. Um, so it didn't like go past when you actually met all the Sailor Scouts and the actual ending of uh, Sailor Moon and, you know, all that type of stuff. So I had to go and do my own external research and finish the series. And I was in so much awe and, you know, being from like the Western region, they cut a lot of stuff out um, and I wanted to learn more about, you know, Sailor Moon and everything. So I went to read the manga, just so much. Like when I'm, when I'm so in love with something, after I finished everything, I would do a deep dive. I would do a deep dive on the voice actors, you know, the creator, everything just to, <laughs> just so I kind of like get in awe and just captivate the moments and just how this amazing anime just came to life so yeah it was you know watching it when I was super young um in the UK that's so cool I actually um in the same way like whenever I get in, like start to like something I'm like I want to read up on everything like what's everyone saying about it what's like mm-hmm. articles like who's a part of this like what are what else have they done exactly <laughs> yeah I totally get that oh the fan fiction or yeah. you know like the what ifs the cliffhangers like that people make up you know all that type of stuff that's cool I also realized as you were talking I didn't know whether I didn't know that Tsunami aired also in the UK I just never yep. thought about it that's awesome yeah it, it, they did stop airing Ooh, well over I'm gonna show my age here but probably well over 15 years ago or so I can't remember and mm-hmm. there was talk of it coming back but I think they moved it to Adult Swim something like that but um yeah in the UK Toonami had its own station like its own channel and everything so um yeah it was really really cool to just watch it there obviously watch your Dragon Ball Z you know all the other popular animes and stuff so yeah oh that's cool so it was also its own channel like mm-hmm. its own because ours was on Cartoon Network oh yeah I mean yeah. I think I think I I actually I think Sailor Moon was on Cartoon Network but from what I remember it was mainly Fox Kids or Toonami mm-hmm. cool man I would have loved a Toonami channel <laughs> oh I would have thought that you know the US had a Toonami channel anyways because I think it all came from there Mm-mm, no they just aired it they we had a tsunami block on cartoon Network, right and okay it was like from four to seven i think and then they would also bring it back at night sometimes and like oh, um later on like cowboy bebop would play and yeah that, yeah yeah stuff. yeah oh that's so cool though i love that love thank i love you. a good origin story thank you um, thank you so how did you feel what were you thinking as you were watching this this show for the first time i just felt like so for me, one of my favorite genres of anime is the slice of life, dramas, romance. And the fact that it had all of that plus action, you know, it had, it just had the mature, um, you know, storylines and it just had everything resonate into one. So yes, you know, when people, when people look at Sailor Moon, they feel like it's this happy go lucky, you know, pop princess kind of, but no, it's actually deeper than that. And what's so crazy is that the actual anime itself is only scratching the surface when you actually read the manga it's so much more deeper than that and um it was just like 
I just felt captivated. I felt like I was a sailor scout myself. I felt like I was living the life that they were living. I, you know, I wanted to wake up one day and be a, sa- a sailor soldier or something like that, or, you know, or Queen Serenity's like daughter or something, because it was just, just everything, the way they set, set it up, the world building in it, the stories, the, you know, the drama, the romance, you know, just, it was so much, the villains, and I just loved how there was always a lesson to be learned at the end of it, so, yeah. Yeah, no, the manga definitely is so much darker, and like yeah. you said, like, the story is so much deeper so many times, and it's, it's both are great, but, um, yeah, they're both great, but there definitely has yeah. some pros and cons in both ends. Yeah, definitely. Like, Sailor Moon is my favorite anime of all time. So anyone that knows me knows that I speak very, very highly of it. When it's Christmas time and my friends are doing Secret Santa, they know to get me something Sailor Moon related. <laughs> um, you know, I still have some of the mangas and everything. I have, like, the cups, um, the little um, figures and stuff like that. Like, it just, even, I mean, the anime was absolutely amazing, but you know the manga it was just so cultivating for me i w- i guess i naturally prefer the anime because visually that's one of what i want to see but i do wish that they did kind of um i mean they did remake uh sailor moon mm-hmm. recently but um and they did kind of adapt to the manga more recently as opposed to the original yeah so um I do wish that, I guess, upon watching the original, that it was more kind of closer to the manga. Which, But I'm still fine. I'm still satisfied with everything because I always do like a yearly watch of Sailor Moon anyways from the beginning to the end. So, you know, just to keep myself updated. (laughs) I love that so much. It's, it's, it really is a show that you can just watch over and over again and never get tired of it. Absolutely. Exactly. The replay value on it is absolutely amazing. Definitely. It's just, it's, it's perfect. Um. I wonder too, since do you have a favorite arc? Hmm. Or season? My fa- I you know what? They're so good in their own way. Um Ah, <sighs> oh, it's so honestly, every single arc it just has its own strengths, to be honest. Um, I guess ah, oh, it's wow. <laughs> it's, that is a very good question a Thank very you. very good question because <laughs> to be honest it was such a consistent show mm-hmm. and yeah it was such a it was such a consistent show that it was just it's kind of hard to kind of you know put your faves or top three I think hmm, I do like oh this is hard <laughs> this is hard because like do I do it based off the manga do I do it based right. off the well, anime you can do your favorite in the manga and a favorite in the anime if you want to do that I do like the Black Moon arc I do like uh, I do like the like the Infinity one Um, I do like you know the Stars arc Um, oh, there's so many I loved Oh, this is it's so hard. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, hmm. What's the arc where, um, you know, when who is it? Uranus and um, Neptune. Yes, when they first arrive as well, that was really good. Like when they first, mm. it was just after that filler arc, I believe. I think the it's one where they Deathbusters I- arc. Is that what it's called? I think I think it is. I think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, and that's Sailor Moon S. Yeah, mm, mm. It's the season. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. So, yeah, but again, like all of them are just in its own right. It's like absolutely amazing. Um, obviously the the last one as well, where Sailor Moon just goes full berserk, naked and everything, and <laughs> turns mm-hmm. into this this kind of godlike sailor being um that was one of my favorites and it's, it has that like nice little cliffhanger as well um yeah. i really liked that it was kind of emotional as well for me as well because i didn't want it to end and um yeah like i 
Yeah, that was very emotional for me. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I I definitely like the you know the final arc as well. Yeah, no, I I totally get it. Um, there's definitely some overlap for us because I love Black Moon Clan and I also love Stars. Yes. yes. Um, they're so good, such good villains. Like you said before, like I think that's mm-hmm. one of the things Sailor Moon has is not only do you get good heroes, you also get really compelling and interesting and ver- varied um, villains. Mm. Mm. exactly and Mm -hmm. it was one of those kind of villains where they always used to kind of mess with like um with um serena's head a lot of the Mm -hmm. time so it was just one of those ones where you just don't know what is going to happen and even still she always found a way to overcome it um so i really do like the villains and i know they did change up from the like the origin of the manga but you know they still did well for what it was yeah yeah i completely agree and it's funny i think um that's what i always tell my friends too whenever they um they're like i don't know what to get you for your birthday or for christmas and i'm like anything sailor moon even if i have it already exactly. i'll be happy <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll you don't again. need to do too much yeah i'm like literally anything sailor moon you can give me a sailor moon bookmark i'll be happy <laughs> 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 like listen when i move out i'm definitely gonna have like a little not shrine but like a little area where it's just sailor moon collectibles and stuff yeah you know? i've thought about the same thing too and i'm like same and i've gone through the same issue i'm like i don't want to call it a shrine because that feels too so it's too cultish yeah i know <laughs> yeah exactly but, uh, but it's definitely gonna be a little area a dedicated area <laughs> <laughs> whenever i get all my merch and things in one place yeah <laughs> That is cool. When was What's the last on? time you watched um, Sailor Moon as I, like a whole? I watched it right well, right as I was starting this podcast because I was like, I need to brush up <laughs> um, <laughs> on the show if I'm going to be talking about it with people. Because um, yeah. before that, I hadn't watched it for a few years, at least all the way through. And so I was like, let mm. me. And then I just um, finished rereading the manga for the first time in a long time. Oh, uh, I need to redo that, yeah. Yeah, I um, I did buy. I bought the Eternal Editions. Oh, and amazing! I kind of just been sitting. Yeah, I bought it for myself for my birthday last year because I was like, quarantine. It's my birthday. I'm like, I'm just gonna buy the whole thing <laughs> as a birthday gift to myself because mm. it was about the same amount of money I probably would have spent if I went out. Yeah. Um. Definitely so, send me the link. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I love them so much. But um, yeah, I, I reread them earlier this year. Mm. Um, and yeah, it was, it's it's great. Awesome. But uh, what's uh, your favorite Sailor Moon merch that you've got? Hmm, probably recently there's a Sailor Moon cup that my friend got me for my birthday, and when you fill it up with hot water, it changes. It's yeah. so so cool. Like I love it so much. Um, so that's like my new favorite. Um, my friend he got me a uh chibiusa and sailor moon figure um i think it got shipped from japan as a secret santa so that was really nice so yeah that is cool i have seen that mug too and it looks so cool yeah you've seen it yeah (laughs) Yeah. and i always have to stop myself from buying it because i'm like you don't need another mug but i'm like i I want it it, it, (laughs) and it it glows up but you know it's just like transforming Mm. but it glows up (sighs) That's so cool. I love that too, because actually I think my recent favorite is also a Sailor Moon mug that I got from um, Box Lunch, because it's like glittery and it has all of the, uh, the uh, what are they called? Not scepters, but like all the like uh, transformation pins of each mm-hmm. of the scouts. Or each of the oh, scouts. that's amazing. Yeah, and it's such a cute little mug. Like I got it and I was like, this is so cute. I don't even want to drink from it. <laughs> I, just, I just keep it on my desk now. It's like decoration because it's it's so cute and it's like gold so and cute. it's really pretty you definitely need to show me yeah i'll send you a link and awesome. i'll put one in the down below for anyone who uh, is listening to yes. this <laughs> and if any if any of you guys have some sort of sailor moon merch tweet us let us yeah. know what you've got please do yeah i'm always always looking for more even though i don't need it because it <laughs> makes me happy <laughs> um and then, hopefully this isn't a hard question too, but who is your favorite Sailor Senshi? Mm, okay. 
for different reasons because of different like personalities and stuff so we're obviously going to start with um Usaki um you know and just Usaki aka Serena um just her whole demeanor just is she just brings so much life yes she is a drama queen she's a crybaby she you know is immature but she really just shows you um so much love and just hope in any bad situation and it just kind of helped me growing up like I said Sailor Moon always gives you these life lessons at the end of every episode but it kind of resonates with real life to you so you know there's that and you know you have Sailor Jupiter because she has that like that tough demeanor but she still has a heart and that resonates with me as well you know um I'm a no-nonsense woman, but I still have a heart. Like, I still want to feel loved and I still want to feel cared for. And then, obviously, Sailor Venus, aka Sailor V, she's the OG. She started it. You know, she has her own games and everything like that. The trendsetter. Um, (laughs) And, yeah, like, I I mean, I love Sailor Mercury. You know, her smarts and her logic. I feel like every single Sailor Senshi just has their own characteristic that can make everyone up into one person like it literally just makes me into one person so um I love Sailor Saturn definitely like I don't know just her whole backstory was just such a intriguing way that it came about so that was nice um love Sailor um Uranus just that tomboy look you know and just who she is and just who she's like just a proud woman you know um so that's really nice um yeah like I think those are my favorites those are my favorites I know you have like the others I know there's like literally I think like 20 sailor senshi but if we're gonna keep it um you know relatively light those are my favorites yeah that is an amazing list (laughs) thank you I I know it should have been one but uh, I'm sorry I understand (laughs) you know it's hard because they're all such great characters like For me, it started with Sailor Moon, and then I was like, oh, I also like Sailor Neptune, and then I also like Sailor Pluto, and then in my most recent rewatch, you know, I I found a new appreciation for Sailor Jupiter, Mm. Um, and um, yeah, and then recently, like, I've had a few Sailor Mercury fans on the show, and they kind of, like, made me see her character in new ways that I'm like, oh, she is really cool, actually, and (laughs) Sailor V I love, because I'm like, whenever I talk about myself, I'm like, I'm Sailor V, Sailor Victoria, um and she's just really cool too just Mm -mm -mm. for being her so I I I totally get it it's hard (laughs) it's so hard and I was so worried in coming to this show because I can be here talking about Sailor Moon till kingdom come honestly so (laughs) we welcome that um it's like (laughs) I would tell people like this is the one place where you can talk about Sailor Moon as much as you want for however long you want like (laughs) all good <laughs> oh, safe space here yeah safe space safe space for moonies <laughs> <laughs> oh, but funny enough as i say that i do want to shift a little bit to you <laughs> that's also what we talk about here um because you're doing amazing things as well thank you thank you so much you're welcome um so how did you or how did you come about starting nay saga so I built Naysaga off the frustrations of just not seeing people who look like me in the industry and, you know, trying to work in the games industry myself, applying for jobs within the games industry and just being rejected. Um, and, you know, over time, I've learned that rejection isn't fa- isn't about failure or anything like that. It's just not your time. And me being a spiritual person when it's when god says it's your time it's your time so you know i felt like he just gave me this purpose to start nay saga be this kind of beacon of hope uh you know that will allow people to i guess also be inspired and to just break down barriers where they don't want you in their spaces so with nay saga um you know just after just not applying just stopped applying for jobs in gaming i have a background in health so i currently work in health at the moment so hopefully by the end of the year I will actually go full-time Nay Saga because I'm technically full-time Nay Saga but I still have a day job so (laughs) you know but um yeah so yeah so um you know I still obviously had the passion in health and everything but it was gaming and 
that area that I wanted to you know really dwell in so still continued working in health but I said you know what I'm going to start Saga. I'm going to start this platform where I create my own world to the point where it's so big or it's at the point where I'm in control of my own narrative I'm in control of who I allow in my space I want to make sure that I'm giving people who are black or the minority marginalized more opportunities that aren't afforded to them and they all you know everyone's all getting equity at the same you know same time and in doing so I started off you know hosting my own gaming events gaming tournaments and from there it just literally evolved over you know the last six years and um I was able to work with so many brands you know like Nike, EA, Facebook, um, 2K, uh, I don't want to I don't want to leave the lot um, the list that long but um, PlayStation, Xbox and um, yeah it's just been an amazing ride you know it's been frustrating obviously being as a you know a black woman you know we are the most disrespected we um, don't get the opportunities that we deserve or we actually cultivated and created in, in this space um yeah. it seems like us being the creators of the culture and i'm not just talking about black women black people in general we just are often pushed to the side so it's now time to kind of reclaim that back and you know over the years i you know then turned into a content creator streamer because you know being a black british woman in the games industry I didn't really see anyone who really looks like me going on YouTube and you know doing their thing streaming and stuff so I wanted to start that as well as a way to kind of spark up the conversation and as a way to trailblaze and hopefully have more women you know content create or stream and you know now you're seeing a more more women especially more black women um from the UK doing this stuff um and then I'm also a games consultant, so I work very, very closely with game studios, brands, to ensure that there's diversity, inclusion, representation, and equity in their campaign launches, their product launches, and whatever kind of activities they are doing. Um, and yeah, and I, you know, I'm a public speaker. I'm a DNI consultant, so I work very closely with brands to ensure that the diversity, inclusion within their recruitment stages or their working environment is very inclusive as well and yeah I do produce a couple you know shows and everything like that I worked at GameSpot last year to produce an event um, called Saving for the Next Gen which allows people who want to you know get into the game space to um, just find a way to get in it without actually spending the most or um, just being more efficient with starting their career within the content creating space or within the games industry period and yeah like you know doing that as well um my platform was also made up of anime comics so uh tv and films so we do a lot of reviews for movies and stuff we try to get people involved with their campaigns um and try to do like movie screening um events with our community and yeah over the last six years i've built a community of over probably like eight nine thousand people now um and it's been incredible it's been incredible you know and i started offline and i feel like it's super important to try and do that because yes you know online spaces are amazing but it's it's offline where is where it's matters you know so i'm so grateful to just have that kind of have this platform that i've built for offline and online purposes and you know my community they really really fuck with me um and it's crazy because you don't have to you know you don't have to be this you don't have to look a certain way and that's something that I wanted to kind of do in this space I wanted to show people that you can do it if you're just yourself and you can make a difference and I think it's so important to have purpose as well because if you don't have purpose you don't know what you're going to be doing in this space you know and you often get lost in what are you actually trying to achieve or what kind of impact you're trying to make so yeah yeah i'm all bored with all of that i was just like this Thank is you. so lovely to hear um just you just doing amazing things as i said before and yeah like totally black women never get enough recognition for anything ever <laughs> so, thank you yeah i love everything also i didn't i don't know why i just never thought like games consultant 
Like, I never realized that could be a job. And I'm like, this is so cool. And I wish someone would have told me about it when I was in high school. (laughs) I didn't think so either. I didn't think so either until, I guess, a lot of things that I'm doing, I didn't think was a thing until it was so consistent. And then companies will reach out and brands will reach out. And you end up being the go-to person now when something needs to be done or this, that, and a third. So um I was just like okay bet like games console and it is (laughs) and it's such a fun job to do um obviously you know it's quite not annoying but it's one of those ones where it's sad because it's just like I wouldn't have had to create Naysaga if you know the games industry wasn't um this toxic you know so you know being a gamer since like four like I've always loved gaming and gaming's never been a thing where it's gendered or a color or you know all that type of stuff but Mm -hmm. you know the way the industry is built up you have to kind of break down those stereotypes and the ignorance yeah definitely and i mean hopefully it is it is sad that like as gamers like we don't we haven't had that but i feel like the next generation of gamers thanks to you will hopefully have that or at least it'll be better yeah Mm, that's really cool though um Super cool, yeah. And every time I see pictures from your events from before, I'm like, this looks so fun. Like, I don't know, it's like the pink and purple hues, and <laughs> I'm just like, I want to be there. I <laughs> need to go you. to the UK. <laughs> I really hope that, like, I wanted to definitely take Naysaga events um, to the US. Um, mm-hmm. Me and my friend, uh, Jayanne, uh, Jayanne, who is founder of Black Girl Gamers, we mm-hmm. co produce um, this platform called Gamer Girls Night In which we did with Facebook last year. And it was so good that so many people from the US and outside of the UK really wanted us to go to their own areas and do that. And we wanted to, we was planning to do it and then COVID hit. So hopefully within the next like, you know, one to two years and stuff, we'll definitely try and do some sort of nice little tour. That would be awesome. Yeah, I remember when that event was going on. And I think that was one of the ones where I was like, I want to, I want to go. Like, yeah. <laughs> why can't I go? Why am I not there? Um, and I think that might have been around the same time I found you guys, found Naysaga. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, and I've heard of Black Girl Gamers. They're also really dope. Hoping to get them on the podcast one day. So, oh, wow. definitely. <laughs> yeah. That is so cool. Thank you. I don't know what my neighbor's doing. There's some knocking going on. So if you're that, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> they should know <laughs> like, it's Sailor Moon time. They should definitely try and actually mind their own. Right? How rude. <laughs> <laughs> it's like rolling marbles or something. Um, yeah. But speaking of games, so you said you've been playing video games since you were four. Um, do you remember what your first video game was? Street Fighter 2. Ooh, that's a good one. That was my first game. First console ever was the SNES. And mm-hmm. ever since then, I've just fallen in love with gaming. Like, gaming is my life. Gaming is my escapism. Gaming helps with my mental health. Gaming is my passion. And I'm so thankful to be in an industry where I'm able to actually make it a career. And hopefully, you know, go full time with it very soon. Um, but yeah man gaming is just something just where like I feel like I don't have to be anyone but but myself I'm able to create my own worlds my own realities and I you know you don't have to be the best to enjoy gaming especially being in this industry you don't have to be the best or the most competitive to make um, a career out of it just gotta love what you do and show everyone else how much you love it as well yeah that's one thing that's been reassuring because I grew up loving video games. I used to play uh, like Soul Calibur and you know Super Mario mm. and a whole bunch of different things. And um, but I think recently, or not recently, like in, like in college, I was like, huh, I'm not, I'm not like the best person at games. And I'm like, maybe I don't like this, or maybe I'm not. This isn't for me. But recently, I've been like, oh, like I just don't like these type of games. Or I'm like, oh, I don't like long games. I'm like, oh, I just like playing games and i just want to enjoy it i don't want to be like the top person or whatever i just want to play mm, exactly yeah. i think it's, it's just that's it it's just playing and just enjoying it you don't have yeah. to be the greatest ever but as long as you enjoy it that's all that matters yeah that's i agree um and then on top of that so street fighter was your first game what's your favorite game 
favorite game. Oh, and who's your go-to Street Fighter? Uh, go to Street Fighter is Chun Li, and favorite game of all time is Grand Theft Auto by City. Ooh, good yeah. choices. Thank you. What were you? For Street Fighter, well, Street Fighter, Rose. Um, oh, nice. I used to love Rose. Uh, I like long range attacks. Oh. <laughs> and um, it's safe. It's all... safe. It is. It's a safe. It it's really a safe. Is. <laughs> it's a like, safe strategy. Yeah, I'm like long range and uh, trans. Uh, what's it called? That transfer. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, favorite game of all time, I think, is Super Mario World. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, that's a game I've replayed so many times, and it's like perfect amount of difficulty without getting too frustrating sometimes, but like just really fun and chill. Um, and it just gives me like a bunch of nostalgia. Um, also from the Super Nintendo. Yeah, I think I think that's probably it. Nah, the su- you know the Super Nintendo, Super Mario series, sorry, has like such a preferable amount of games and favorites to choose from. Yeah, um, it's, you, you can literally just pick your favorite and run with it. They've you know been so consistent over the last um, God knows thirty years or so. So probably longer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. Yeah. No, I completely agree. Like I've. For a while, I was really hooked on uh, the Super Mario World, or, you know, just Super Mario games. Yeah. Like, played Super Mario RPG, and then Super Mario Sunshine, and Luigi's mm-hmm. Mansion, just, like, hit after hit. It was fun stuff. Amazing, yeah. yeah. That's cool, though. I love it. Thank um, you. And if you could... So there hasn't been a Sailor Moon game in a really long time, um, and there has not been one released... Uh, at least in the United States. I don't think it was released in the UK either. I think they've all I don't been think, like no. only. Um, but if... Unfortunately. The gods smiled on us and <laughs> <laughs> gave us another Sailor Moon game, what what um, what um would you want it to be? Ooh. If they gave us a Sailor Moon game, I would like the opportunity to... So with Avengers, they um have this thing where you can play online and you can actually pick the characters to play online with. So if one of your friends picks Hulk, you pick uh, Captain America. So for Sailor Moon, I would love the option where you can actually just play online with your friends and everyone picks a Sailor Senshi. And I would like it to be portrayed mainly towards the manga. So it's a bit more darker. But I don't know if they would do it because they want to still kind of cater to the young folk. But it would be nice if they could do that and have more adult themes. You know, make it more true to the manga. But um, it'll be really, really cool. And I hope that you're able to play more arcs. I hope that you'll be able to, like the full arcs and stuff. I hope there'll be side stories as well. You know, so yeah like a really nice action rpg adventure type of game um yeah. i wouldn't want it to be turn-based they could it, mm. it might be turn-based depending on like how they want to do it but yeah it'll be really, really cool yeah be you. i actually i never thought of that so it's like a sailor moon mmo rpg kind of thing mm. maybe not rpg but like sailor moon action like action online type adventure, yeah yeah Ooh. I love that because it'd be because I every time I think of a Sailor Moon game, I always think of just like playing it by myself. But an online component would make would be Amazing. so much fun. Yeah, so like everyone like, has like strengths and weaknesses. Like for example, Sailor Mercury, she'll work better like long range and stuff, but she'll use her technology to you know. And then Sailor Jupiter, she's like a tank type of character. You know, Venus is more agile. Um, right. Mars is more close range. You know, mm-hmm. so it's, yeah, I think that'd be so freaking cool. I like that a lot. Oh man! Every time I hear a new Sailor Moon game idea, I'm like, "Why isn't it? Why don't we have this?" <laughs> <laughs> One day, hopefully. Oh, no. oh, that is a really cool idea. Um, and do you watch any other anime? I watch so much anime, but I have been so busy, I haven't had time to. But you know, I've watched everyone's yeah, cool. favorites. Growing up, Cowboy Bebop, you know, Dead Man Wonderland, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Samurai Shampoo, Afro mm-hmm. Samurai. Yeah, I've watched the Bates, the Dragon Ball Zs, the Narutos, uh, mm-hmm. the Death Notes. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's so so much, you know, the One Punch Man. 
um mm-hmm. and i but for me i actually prefer old school anime the 80s 90s anime that yeah, is where good. like ugh, so much better than um what was that what's that anime movie is it perfect dark um was it oh, um, oh, perfect, perfect blue, blue. that's mm-hmm. it perfect blue ugh, wicked city um marmalade boy mm-hmm. um uh, what was that other one flower uh, what was it called flower boy to all the black so i can't remember mm-hmm. but those old school yeah that's love it love it I still need to get into those. Like, I ever see, like, stills from them, and I'm like, this looks like everything I like. You would um, love it. A little it. scary, but I feel like I would love it, yeah. I am. I really need to just sit down and watch them one day. No, you absolutely love it. Yeah. They just look so good, and I'm like, this looks fascinating. I also really love retro anime. Um, I don't know if you've heard of the app uh, Retro Crush. No, I haven't. It's a um, new streaming platform where they have basically like all retro anime from like 80s oh, and 90s. Yeah. You need and to send me that. I will. It is super cool. And a black woman is the head of acquisitions for them. Oh, let's go. Yes. So they're they're amazing. She was on the podcast also. Um, oh my gosh. Amazing. Yeah. I need to connect with her or something. Yes, it's it's a really cool app, and I think it's free, but it has ads, and you can pay for a paid version if you want. But um, Chinese it's mind. awesome. Send that <laughs> I will definitely send that. <laughs> it's really cool. I like every time I'm like I could just spend all day on this app. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is, that just sounds like a dream. Mm-hmm. It really, really is. No, um, definitely. Also, me. I meant to mention before Vice City, amazing soundtrack. Um, best but... <laughs> soundtrack ever yeah and that's what kind of really made me appreciate 70s music 70s yeah. and 80s music up into 90s yeah there but... were so many times with vice city and san andreas where i would just like get in a car and ride around and just listen to the radio and like not yeah. even play the story mode but just listen to the music honestly i drive like a normal civilian just listening to the music mm-hmm. listening to fever you know like ugh, just the feels that it just gave me like that aesthetic is what inspired my logo um and just what inspired oh. some of my yeah my overall aesthetics you know i don't know why i didn't put that together but once you said it, <laughs> like, i was like that is it <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh that's so cool i love it yeah it's such a vibe thank you um, thank you thank you and do you have advice for anyone who wants to start their own platform for gaming and entertainment or become a games consultant and or do all the other amazing things that you do i would definitely say first and foremost don't watch the numbers um find your purpose figure out why you want to do this figure out how you want to do this and just look for your niche look for you know start creating your own usp network work smarter you can do all the hard work, which is great. And all the hard work is, you know, creating your bla- your brand, all that good stuff, but also definitely work smarter. Um, have fun with it. It is a journey, not a race. And I would definitely say try new things as well, you know, and definitely try and understand the industry. Try and make sure you're up to date with everything. Um, but don't feel like you have to, play every single game and you know of all time no like be honest as well and if you don't like something call it out because that makes an overall difference and trust me more opportunities will come i know you know being a black minority we're not afforded to make mistakes in the industry but honestly like if you stand for something it will take you a long way so yeah yeah all of that. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah. And then just like Sailor Moon had the Sailor Moon says <laughs> phrase <laughs> at the end of every episode, like when we were watching on Fox Kids or Toonami, mm-hmm. um, what would your phrase be? Sailor Stephanie says. So Sailor Saga says it's always going to be impact over numbers. And that's it. Period. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> impact over numbers. So true. So, mm-hmm. so, 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 so true. Um, and then what's next for you and where can people find you? 
Oh, so what is next for me? Girl, I have so many things going on right now. Like, I'm just, <laughs> I'm literally looking at my diary. Like, oh my gosh, I have this coming up. Um, Okay, so where you can find me is, you can find me on all platforms, May Saga, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. Um, my website, www.naysaga.co.uk, even though I need to update it. Um, what's next for Naysaga? I've recently just signed with CAA, so they will be looking after me going forward. Um, a whole lot of projects coming out. Um, I just recently dropped my um, EE campaign with, um, with EE themselves. They are one of UK's biggest um, mobile broadband uh, companies. So I just became an ambassador for them. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, just working more with game studios, um, creating more content, hopefully, you know, bringing out more events this year as well. But there's a lot in store. Um, most of the time I'm under NDA, so it's kind of annoying, but um, <laughs> but just expect a lot more from, from myself. I, those, I'm those type of people that, you know, I'm about my action. So I try not to say too much. So, yeah. Gotcha. No, I totally get it. Those are good problems to have. Oh, thank training, you. Good problems. <laughs> thank yeah. you. And I, like the, and I guess the last thing is just giving more people opportunities and helping them. Um, mm -hmm. cultivate them in this space so yeah yeah and I look forward to any in-person events once it's Thank safe you. <laughs> definitely go to the UK you come over here one yes. or the other it's happening I'm due to <laughs> yeah I'm so excited yeah I miss I miss in-person events too as much as like virtual events are great it is different to like connect with people in person and just kind of like see people and you know absolutely talk to them yeah so side conversations and such but mm -hmm. either way thank you for coming <laughs> on the Salem and Fan Club podcast <laughs> thank you so much for having me guys this has been long overdue um I'm probably UK's number one Sailor Moon fan so it's good to come and represent from the UK <laughs> I love it yeah I'm definitely going to introduce you like that on social when this episode drops <laughs> UK's number one Sailor Moon fan <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Honestly, I... <laughs> hmm, don't even get me started. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's, you know, yep, it's there. Um, and once again, I'm Victoria L. Johnson. This is the Salem with Fan Club podcast. You can find podcasts on any podcast streaming platforms. Um, so make sure you like and subscribe to us. And you can find me at Miss Old School on Instagram and Twitter. Miss Old School with a K. And you can find the podcast at Mooney's Club on Twitter and Mooney's underscore club on Instagram. And thanks for listening, Mooney's. Bye.